Warning, the following program contains scenes of death. If you look at this case from the standpoint of the physical facts and the physical facts alone, I think it is very clear that this is a killing by lying in wait. We have a young lady who answers the door to her apartment house. The calm doesn't work. She goes to the apartment door and she is shot. Clearly not enough time for any conversation to occur. It implies that somebody rang the bell for the purpose of luring her out of her apartment so that she could be killed. On uh, June the 2nd, 1987, our guard uh, at the ranch gate called me and said, there's a fellow here that's been here lots of times who has a large bouquet and about a five foot teddy bear and he's left it with us and he wants us to deliver it to Rebecca Schaefer. Uh, what should we do? And knowing that this individual had called numerous times and been referred to us by the production company of my sister Sam because he called them so many times I said pack up the teddy bear the flowers and Bardo and bring him to my office I want to talk to him I proceeded to uh, tell him that the best thing for him to do would be to uh, stay away from the studio and not try to get near Rebecca Schaefer and I offered, I said, how did you get out here today from Hollywood? And he said, I came out on the bus. I said, well, I don't want to see you go back on the bus with that five-foot teddy bear and all those flowers. So how'd it be if I drove you back to Hollywood to your place? And he said, great, would you? And I said, yes, I would. And I proceeded to put him in my a company vehicle that I drove. And I drove him back to his place on Whitley Street in Hollywood. Dropped him off. I told him that I thought the best thing he could do would be to go back to Tucson where he came from. I, I tried to talk to him like a friend or an uncle or something because he was a young fellow. I believe he was 19 at the time. And uh, he said, I'm going to do that. And thank he thanked me very much when he got out. And uh, all in all, it was a fairly, for what it was, it was a pleasant uh, encounter. And I felt that I'd accomplished something by getting this fellow to agree to leave town. It's not like we know each other real well or anything. Annie, I mean, come on, would you get yourself together? I mean, aren't you liberated or anything? Liberated enough to tell you where you can get off, buddy! Rebecca Schaefer was born and raised in Oregon. The only child of Benson Schaefer, a child psychologist, and Dana Schaefer, who was a writer. A free-spirited child, Rebecca showed an affinity for the limelight early in her life and started modeling, destined for higher things. That modeling ended up taking her to New York where she decided to pursue a career in television. And it didn't take long for the pretty young girl to get discovered and get a role on daytime television in a soap opera. And almost unheard of at the time, the actress was scouted by Hollywood agent and offered a primetime series in Hollywood. And in a very short time, on a meteoric rise to fame, riding a gravy train with biscuit wheels. Life isn't this good. I must be dreaming. But be careful what you wish for, because even the best of dreams can turn. Hi, I'm Patty Russell, and this is my sister Sam. I just moved in. We haven't lived together since we were kids. I was raised by our aunt and uncle. Yeah, things sure have changed. And although the cheese factor was warp six, the show was a success. But with more money comes more problems. And with the aphrodisiac of fame, it seemed that every Fruit Loop were climbing out of his bowl of milk and making a beeline towards the tasty actress. But friends and colleagues say that she was unaffected by the trappings of fame. When she finally saved up enough to get her own place, her co-star told her that she should never put her name on her door buzzer. Sound advice that the young actress ignored. Did you become aware at some point that your brother was interested in the actress starring in My Sister Sam? 
Yes, I did. About a month before, or excuse me, I'm sorry, about two months before the murder occurred, did you see him looking through the yellow pages to locate a private detective? I believe I did. And about a month before the murder occurred, did the defendant tell you that he had in fact hired a private detective to find Rebecca Schaefer? I believe he did. And did he tell you that he had paid a few hundred dollars for that service? I believe so. Robert Bardo had been rejected twice trying to buy a gun because of his mental health issues. And his brother knew that. And while Robert waited outside, he went in and bought him a gun. Were you aware that he had, the defendant had gone to Los Angeles several times before to see celebrities? Yes, I was. Had he ever indicated to you a desire to take the gun to Los Angeles on previous occasions? He gave some indications that I inferred suggested that. So, I mean, in a roundabout way, yes, he did. When he indicated that desire to take the gun to Los Angeles with him, did you inform him of anything? Yes, I informed him of the law that transporting a weapon like that would be illegal, and I told him not to take the weapon. And did he agree not to do so? Yes, he did. Did he tell you that he was going to Los Angeles? I believe he did. And his father was, your father, was taking him to the bus station? Yes, he was. Was the defendant's behavior unusual in any respect at that time? No, not really. Did he seem calm, rational? Yes, he did. Nothing out of the norm? Nothing. Did you have any idea that he had the gun on him at the time he left? No, I did not. Shortly after he left, did you look to see if the gun was still in its place in the closet? I believe I did. And what did you find? I found the gun missing. Now Robert Bardo had to find the object of his desire. Thumbing through the yellow pages, he found the tool for his perversion, the Anthony Detective Agency, and he gave its sole employee a call. Can you tell me approximately how many contacts you had with the defendant pertaining to locating Rebecca Schaefer? About 10. And Anthony Zinkus received 250 bucks to find Schaefer's home address and her birth date. A professional rat with more than one individual saying that he now had blood on his hands. During the course of your conversations with Mr. Bardo over the 10 contacts you indicated you had, was there ever any indication to you that he was violent or posed any menace or threat to yourself or the party he was trying to locate? None. At all times, was your conversation or the tenor of your conversation polite? Yes, it was. Did you ever become concerned about his mental stability? No. was arrested this morning on a Tucson freeway. Robert Bardo's first obsession hadn't been Rebecca Schaefer. And uh, she wrote to and received a reply from the Soviet uh, Premier, President uh, Yuri Andropov. And she uh, toured the Soviet Union for two weeks at the invitation of the Soviet government. And uh, I can't wait to find out how she enjoyed the trip. Would you welcome Samantha Smith? Because before the actress, he had a hard-on for the 80s version of Greta Thunberg. Sending the 13-year-old activist love letters, chocolates, and stuffed animals. Writing letters proclaiming his undying love for her. I guess age was just a number for the mono-browed Fruit Loop. But when returning from England after shooting a TV series and a plane caught fire and spiraled into the ground, killing everyone on board, Bardo had to find a new object of his desire. And when a commercial for the TV show My Sister Sam came on, he found it. But even that didn't last, because when the series was cancelled, he lost interest and traded up for teeny bop sensation Debbie Gibson. But it was one night while watching a made-for-TV movie with his family that he saw Schaefer in a bikini. And this time, she weren't playing such a good girl. She dropped the squeaky clean image, and Bardo felt betrayed that she'd become just another Hollywood whore. 
On the day of her murder, Schaefer was waiting to have a script for Godfather 3 delivered to her apartment. Uh, well, I, I proceeded back towards my car, and uh, the defendant uh, was calling out to me from across the street, and uh, I, you know, tried to ignore him and, and just make go back to my car, and uh, I got inside my car, and he was still calling to me and trying to get my attention. He asked me if I had seen her around the neighborhood or if I knew that she lived around there or not. Did you respond to him? Uh, yes, I said, no, I've never seen her before. Did he ask you another question? Uh, yes. What did he ask you? He asked me if I had just delivered to the uh, apartment building. Rebecca Schaefer's building? Yes. Did you answer him? Uh, I, I believe I said something like uh, that I, I didn't want to answer any more questions. But this hadn't been Bardo's only attempt to hook up with Rebecca Schaefer. He'd visited Hollywood twice before. The second time, he brought a knife. Both times, he was stopped by the studio. But I guess at first you don't succeed. Try, try again. In high school, Bardo was a loser. He skipped off more than he attended. He'd been in trouble with the law several times forcefully admitted into a psych ward, eventually dropped out and became a janitor at a fast food joint. But if his parents were disappointed, they didn't have long to worry about it because they had seven kids. Little did they know their son was soon to become famous, not in the way they'd expected. I guess we'll never know what Bardo's plan was when his father dropped him off at that Greyhound station in Arizona. Although the outcome is well documented, Bardo had regularly been sending Rebecca Schaefer fan letters. But she'd made the mistake of responding to one of them, writing him back, telling him that she loved it, and it was the best letter she'd ever got. Her taking pity on the loser would be costly, and a death clock was now ticking. Arriving early, Bardo went straight to Schaefer's apartment. When he rang the door buzzer, the intercom was broken. Just getting out of the shower, she came down from the second floor, expecting the script for Godfather 3. You can only guess her disappointment when she saw Bardo's mongoloid face gazing through the glass door. By his own account, she was curt with him and told him not to come back. She shut the door on him, went upstairs, and he walked away. We knew that's where he was going. And then after you watched this movie, Lethal Weapon 2, with Robert, on the way home, he advised you that he was going to move up? That yes, day? that he was going to leave uh, that next day. Did he tell you why he had uh, decided to advance his plans? He said some reason he had to, he had to go now. After his trip in... July of 1989, you became aware of his arrest in relationship to the death of Rebecca Schaefer? The way I caught about it was uh, we happened to be watching the uh, CNN news and I heard that Rebecca had been killed and my first thought, knowing my son had gone to see it, was that we couldn't believe it. But uh, And then uh, as soon as we heard it, my son went and checked to see if the uh, pistol was still in the house and then he went searching for it where he had hit it. And the pistol was gone. But Bardo hadn't taken the hint, and he'd only gone a short distance down the road to a restaurant. And after consuming an order of onion rings and cheesecake, he doubled back to the actress's place. And then I look, I see him down the hallway. And I'm through. I was like, so I was there, and I was like, you know, it's like, there she is, and I don't have to shoot any security guards to get her, and she's right there in front of me, you know, and I, and I didn't even shoot her, you know, I, the gun was in the van, you know, I was still talking to her, you know, like, she was just a regular person, you know, there was no big security guards, you know, she wasn't dressed up glamorously, like, some, you know? and I don't even know, I was just, you know, I was just, just like this, it's me and her, you know, it's like, what, most guys who fantasize about seeing their favorite celebrity, you know, and this was it, it's just me and her, you know, I'm talking to her, you know. But I wasn't focusing too much attention on it, but it seemed like she said a, 
You mean to come to my house, give me a letter, and you know, come again? You know? Like she was like I was bothering her, and I thought I was such an arrogant shame, you know. That fact, she, she was mumbling. She sounded like a little kid, you know. She sounded like a little. She had some kid, like kid voice, like brat, like she sounded like a little brat or something. And, and I was just voicing, voicing, you know, wasting your time, you know, like, like I'm, you know, I mean. I thought that was very challenging to say to a fan. I grabbed it with this fan. I grabbed the door. Gun still in the bed. It was wrong. Grab, grab it on the chair. This. The boy hit her here. Blood squirted out. She was just screaming. God damn. It's coming right out. Ah, I'm screaming. Oh my god. You know, I was like, oh my god. Oh fuck. I, you know, I, 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 I killed her, you know. And she was like, screaming and she was, she, she fell back. She fought me. I was just going like this, you know, she's constantly doing it. She hit the ground, she, she was going, what? And I was like, looking at her, oh my god, I killed someone. Oh no, I, no, I did, oh no. No, I'm pissed off. No, I can't. No, no, I couldn't pull the back there. I just did, you know. And she was, uh, she was going, uh, why, why? She's screaming. She's just straight screaming. I'm screaming. Why, why? So within about a split second after Rebecca's footsteps passed your door, you heard a blast. Very loud. Very loud. It's like a cannon blast, and in this particular hallway, it was extremely loud. What happened next? Oh, um, I dropped my knees because the blast came through the door. It rattled the door and sort of knocked me to my knees, and I crawled to the other side of the door and ran to the bedroom and immediately got on the phone and dialed 911. What happened next? What happened is I was on the phone to, nine, to uh, the 911 people and I heard, uh, well, actually, as I was going into the bedroom, I heard the scream, one very loud, long scream. And as I was on the phone, there were more screams. And I mentioned to the people on the phone, can't you hear her screaming in the background? By the time the LAPD got a call that an actress had been shot, Bardo was already on a Greyhound headed back to Tucson. But it was the very next morning the police got a call about a young man acting erratically on the freeway, walking around like he wanted to be hit, and asked him his name. He said, Robert Bardo and to call his parents. What, were you, what did the father say? The dispatcher told me that the father had advised that the defendant might be armed and that he had possibly killed an actress in California. And based on what you heard, sir, what did you do? I immediately went back to him. I had separated from him so he couldn't hear my radio conversations. I immediately went back to him and Officer Oin and frisked him looking for a weapon. While I was on the radio, he leaned his head on the DPS car and started to sob. And what did you do? I asked him what was wrong and he said that I had better arrest him now and I asked him why and what for, and he said, I shot somebody. I wonder where this road might carry and take me. I wonder how this load might make or break me. Following a map that has not a word or name. A broken compass and my Nobody else to blame It's all so Right. 
it's over. He'll be he'll be in there for the rest of his life, thank God. I need to find some peace and quiet in my mind. But with my thoughts this loud, it's just so hard to find. So I will keep on walking into dead ends to turn myself. Around and start over again. It's all so unfamiliar. I look so unfamiliar. Guide me home, home, out of the The book says, no more.